Hey guys, Naisha here, you know, just an average girl. Because of Hurricane Ian, I unfortunately was unable to post my experience of Universal's Halloween Horror Nights and Bush Gardens Hollow Scream this year. So I decided to mash them up together and create what I'm going to call Who Did It Better? So please remember, this is based on my opinion and observation alone. So if you had a better experience than I did, then awesome. If you see something that you agree here, that's cool too. So let's see who did it better this year. And I will start with decor and gore. When it comes to decorations and atmosphere, to be honest, bush gardens can create quite an eerie and dark environment. It makes you feel like you're jumping into a whole other world. As for Universal, I love how very decorative it is. In fact, you can barely see any spots that don't have anything that's Halloween. So both points go to both parks. Now, decorations is one thing, but areas that will amaze and terrify you is another. I'm talking about scare zones. So the next category is scare zone antics. Bush Gardens had some really good scare zones. I mean, just using the park itself creates a really, really creepy atmosphere. I mean, it is low lit. Sometimes you can barely see where you're going or what's going to pop up. You don't need a story to realize that you just walked into a bayou full of villainous voodoo vagabonds. You could hear it from the music. And believe me when I say actors play a major part, which I will talk about later. When it comes to the scare zones at Universal, and I mean Universal Orlando, not California. I mean, if you've seen the videos that California has for this year's Halloween Horror Nights, it blows Orlando out of the water. 2016, 2018, 2019, those were the best years that Orlando was at its finest during Halloween Horror Nights. And honestly, I feel that it's starting to lose its spark. I'm not talking about the scare zones based on movies. I'm talking about the vampires, where they're rocking in the new year of 1985. Or the zombies of all your favorite actors and singers and musicians. Even their demented toy land was great. But this year, I didn't feel it. I'm sorry, Orlando. I love you. I really do. But California really outshined you this year. And a major reason is what, again, I'm going to mention towards the end. So the winner for this round is Bush Gardens for their best scare zones. Now, it wouldn't be Halloween without houses that go bump in the night. The next category is Houses of Horrors. Now, I know what you're thinking. Universal is bigger than Bush Gardens. I get it. Bush Gardens has five houses, whereas Universal has 10. I'll make it simple for you. For the past two or three years, Universal has really only had five out of 10 great houses. So with this 10 that you see right here, you're welcome. For the record, the weekend house was nice, but I only like the fact that you get to experience the part that he did during the Super Bowl halftime. 
and I'll always have a heart for the classic legendary universal monsters. Also, I hate bugs, and I was hoping the bugs eaten alive house would have amped my fear about certain things that I don't like about insects. <sighs> but nope, didn't do nothing, so moving on. The five houses at Universal were top-notch in all the elements a haunted house should be. Cause I mean, come on, who wouldn't jump at a lunatic with a knife? But honestly, I jumped at Busch Gardens more times than I ever did at Universal Studios. I'm talking all five houses. If I were to really pick which house the best, I'm gonna have to say it was the werewolves because I'm a werewolf fan. But the fact is, each and every house I went to, I was scared. <laughs> I was freaking scared and I loved it. And I believe that the element of surprise plays a major part in their houses. I mean, it's low lighting, decorative at its best, and where they place their actors helps make the houses truly terrifying. I'll have to say once again, Points go to Bush Gardens. Now we come down to the last category where I find it important because without them, these events wouldn't be fun. So I'm talking about the scare actors. So on to action. During the pandemic, I went to Hollow Scream, and to be honest, I wasn't impressed. The actors, they couldn't really, you know, come out. They couldn't really perform as they should. And to be honest with you, it was my sister that convinced me to go to Hollow Scream this year. And to be honest, I am so glad that she did. Because the scare actors at Bush Gardens looked like they were having so much fun. <laughs> and Elam said, Matthias, uh -huh. I am but a lowly servant. Is that so? But I, Elam, I will climb to the top of Mount Zelaya. When my sister and I were walking through the cemetery, the actors actually interacted with us and made us a part of their story. Hell, there were scare actors in brilliant disguises that I won't spoil for you because if they're going to use that tactic for next year, I hope they go above and beyond with that because it honestly terrified me because I didn't know where they were coming and where they were going. And there's also another one that I like to call the bungees. The scare actors were strapped to these bungee um, things and they can just leap out and terrify you and w without a, a moment's notice. And it is brilliantly done. And I wouldn't be surprised if they get these tactics from Universal California. I mean, have you actually seen their videos? They have a Jordan Peele scare zone where they combined the movies Us and Nope, which was brilliant and would honestly scare me if I wasn't paying attention. Those guys know the art of stealth and how to jump scare you. Orlando, nothing. And to me, that's what was missing in Orlando. If the scare actors were anything like Bush Gardens or California, I probably would have enjoyed Halloween Horror Nights even more. But I was honestly disappointed this year. And I hope Orlando comes back with a full force. In the end, Bush Gardens is the winner. If I was in California, you know that I would make that the winner hands down. And yet, I still never tried SeaWorld. So hopefully next year, I'll get to do that too. Again, I apologize for not posting full videos of both my experiences, but I look forward to next year. So guys, did you enjoy Halloween Horror Nights or did you enjoy Hollow Scream? Tell me which one that you like the most. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click on the like button. If you like content like this, you can subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to click on that bell for more notifications. This is Naisha, and I'm just an average girl. Stay tuned.